I'm Hannah. I'm Ant. And this is Art in the Corridor. We are Aunt Hannah and Mabel the Pup. We live and work from our 50 foot narrowboat, The Corridor. Come and join us as we attempt to navigate the English canals and the world as full time artists. Here we go. And you promised I'd float with the clouds a cocoon. But I plummet to the ground just like a lead balloon. So there was a lot of rain last night and a lot of wind and we're under trees which we're not usually and the leaves are getting everywhere on the back. If you saw one of our previous videos we've had some issues with rainwater coming into the engine bay which is quite typical of a cruise astern but I think over time the boat's getting a bit older, the backboards are starting to crumble a little bit and so there's kind of more ways that the water can get in. So I think it's going to be a daily thing. I'm going to have to go out and clear the leaves out of the way so that it clears the drainage area for the rainwater to run off. That's all I can do for now. Next on the agenda, I've got to go and get our um, diesel tank cleaned. A couple of weeks ago we broke down and the fuel filter, you have two, or we have two, had clogged up completely with gunk. So we got a new filter, put that on, but we were advised to get our tank cleaned um, so that it didn't keep clogging up the filters. We let our tank, our diesel, run a bit low and what happens is it then pulls off the gunk from the bottom. Um, but also there's a thing called diesel bug, which we were a bit worried we might have. So diesel bug, pretty much is like a living organism and it thrives in um, areas where there's condensation so if you leave your tank too empty there's more space for that condensation to um, accumulate and then there's more reason for the diesel bug to build basically and if it gets into other components of the engine it can cause a right problem so we're just getting that cleaned it's really interesting and he said that there's a lot of gunk coming out in the diesel and probably somewhere along the line we've picked up some bad diesel so I'm not quite sure where that was but um, yeah hopefully it'll all be sorted It is, what day is it? Wednesday. Wednesday, already. Oh, the time is just flying by. And then it's busy. It, you've got like your own little factory going today. Hey mate. Yes. <laughs> I'm a bit late with my orders because. What did you forget? I stupidly forgot to order envelopes with the um, cards. <laughs> so I had to wait to get some envelopes delivered because it wasn't worth just going into the local post office and picking up envelopes because it would have cost me a fortune so I had to buy a bulk. I don't think they even do envelopes like that, do they? I don't know if they do. I was trying to explain to you the difference between a greeting card envelope. Yeah. Do you say envelope or envelope? <laughs> <laughs> Comment down below. A little bit. How still, can you? Be, <laughs> how yeah, can you? It's still the same until you read it. Yeah. So so is this taking you back to your factory days? Yeah, I'm basically working in the factory today. Did you love working in factories? No, I didn't. <laughs> done it for years and years. No, I didn't. Did you hate it? Yes. What factories did you work in? Uh, Mookie Toys. <laughs> Nothing like you'd imagine a toy factory to be. 
Yeah. When you think toy box. factory, I bet you're thinking like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Yeah, nothing like that. No. No. It's scary and violent. Was it? <laughs> not violent? Vi not quite violent. I can imagine it just being really noisy. Yeah, noisy and weird and just cold. Um, I probably shouldn't be saying that because I'm sure they're probably still operating. <laughs> yeah, but... I'm mean, aware of the work. Then I worked at somewhere called um, Mass Moulds. That sounds riveting. Yeah, that was a pla injection moulding company. Needs must though, isn't it? Yeah. But I think my heart goes out to people working in factories. I'm sure lots of people love it, but I can imagine it being a really hard Oh yeah, it all depends where you are, yes. Yeah. But although they treated you pretty well, didn't they? Yeah, some of them were really good, yeah. Like Mass Moulds, used to get a big Christmas hamper for yeah. the food. Yeah. Well, that'd be lovely. And I worked at SBD, Weber SBD. That was quite good. You used to get a profit share. That was really good. Did you, when I was, because I was always self-employed, I always wish there was like a Christmas party or something. Yeah, we went to, a, we, they used to have Christmas parties. Take you up for a meal and stuff. There was me moaning about it. They were actually very nice, weren't they? <laughs> yeah, it just wasn't the job for me. Didn't all. you work in Woburn Safari Park once? Yeah, I did work in Woburn Safari Park. In the, um... Donut van. <laughs> I just can't imagine you doing that. I was only a summer job. I was like 15. I don't feel like customer-facing jobs would be your thing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we diverge. This is going well. And we're getting them out, right? Yep. Oh, fancy paper. Okay, then what jobs have you had? What jobs have I had? I've had loads of blooming jobs. <laughs> My first job was in a shoe shop called Brantano. I think it's called... I can't remember what it's called now. It's called something else. And I've had cleaning jobs. I've had cafe jobs. I had... I worked in that hotel when I met you, didn't I? The one where they bought you um, a iron and an alarm clock. Yeah. <laughs> because you kept turning up in a scruffy shirt late. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, whilst I was doing that, I was trying to build up my dance work. Yeah. Then I worked as a full-time dance artist for like however many years. And then when I stopped, do you remember, I was like, I'd stopped dancing and I was like injured and stuff, but I really still wanted to make money. And I started like watching, trying to get coupons on the internet. <laughs> and then I decided, right, maybe I can do like um, Avon. Yeah. Avon lady came round with like a ton piles of and piles and books. Catalogues, yeah. <laughs> and then when you suddenly suss that you only had a push bike and it probably wasn't a good idea. <laughs> 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 yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, now that I'm, we're like on the boat, I always, wherever we are, I try and get a job on the hire boats cleaning. That's yeah. always a handy one. Yeah. Bits and bobs, eh? Yeah, that's it. It's, it. You know, there's no shame in any job, is there? If you're working to pay your way, exactly. good on you. Yeah, I feel like I had my career and then I had to, things changed and then you just do what you've got to do. Exactly, yeah. And the main thing is that you're surviving yep. and you're happy and you're healthy. <laughs> okay. Right, you. Let's chit chat. Get back on with that work. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, foxes. <laughs> Off to the So I've traced this lady now. Here's me a bit of tracing, and this will go on the lino. <laughs>
carving and I'm going to try and do that spirally light effect that I done on that previous lighthouse picture it's a little idea I came up with and I really like it it's really effective so all I do for this is literally draw a spiral and then you just sort of work your way out with all these cuts and when you put that on top of your other color you get this great effect I probably shouldn't be telling you this because um <laughs> everyone will be doing it <laughs> but you can see everything that's been cut out of this one now And we're going to get the ink on this and have a look at what these two layers look like together. So we're ready to get some ink on. I've made this nice, it's like a grey, greeny colour. I don't know how well you can see it. But we're going to see now what, um, what it looks like. I think this colour's a little bit light, it's not really getting the effect I was after. So I've darkened down my ink a little bit and I've just done another one and it's like a, maybe a couple of steps darker but you can see the difference. You can actually see that light effect working now. So we'll do the next ones in that. Bit of a comparison there. Just a bit too light. There we go. So that's layer one and two together, and I'm happy with how that looks now. Um, what I'm gonna do now is start clearing some of this background, because I just want that to be set in the background. So I'm using this great big scoop of a tool, <laughs> and I'm just gonna start gouging it all out. I'm gonna leave some bits in these corners, and sort of on the edges, just to add a bit of depth. But um, yeah, a big load more carving now. So that's the cutting done for this layer. Um, there might be some nibbly bits on here that I need to get rid of, but I'm going to add a red now. And hopefully, we'll nearly be there. Open your heart. Canals, you always bump into these like 
interesting place, isn't it? Yeah. We're in, what's it called? Wolfhamcott. 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 There used to be a village here and it all got... Um... Do we actually know what happened? Well... Some people say it's a plague, some people say it probably just ran out of jobs and moved yeah, on. They knocked all the buildings down, but the church is still here. Well, apparently, there's been a church here for over a thousand years. Or so. <laughs> 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 and although today the parish church St Peter's is no longer in use, it remains an important part of the local landscape. The ancient walls contain many interesting features, some hidden from view, which reflect the story of its long journey through time from the days of the Norman Conquest to the present day. That's mad, isn't it? Look at this beautiful like, woodwork. Oh. Two bells? And you know what I really want to do? <laughs> what? Look at it. I've always wanted to have a go at b ring b bell ringing. What if the villagers come running to the church? Do you think it even works? Yeah, how good it does. We've got tons of ancient bell falling on you. Because it's just like there, it's so tempting, isn't it? Like, they would have just like said, please don't touch if they didn't want anyone to touch it, wouldn't they? <laughs> They have what's it called? Camping. <laughs> Church camping. Yes. If you weren't allowed to touch things, it's the same for please don't touch, wouldn't it? It would, yeah. I shouldn't, should I? Right, it is time for Artist of the Week. Who have we got this week, Anthony? The brilliant Pete Tuffrey. The brilliant <laughs> Pete Tuffrey. So if you're on a boat, you probably may have heard of him. He's part of the Guild of Waterway Artists and he is a lovely bloke and he's a beautiful artist. So here's a little glimpse into his world and we'll put all the links up at the end and enjoy. Yeah, and thanks, Pete. Thank you, Pete. Over to you. Hello, my name's Pete Tuffrey. I'm a landscape artist living on board my narrowboats Time and Della on the Gloucester Sharpness Canal. I've been painting for about 20 years, but the last 10 years a lot more seriously. And I recently just turned professional. I've got a nice studio, as you'll see in the video. It's a great space, lots of room. I can just leave it a mess, so it's really cool. I use spray paint, acrylic, stencils, pencil, pen, acrylic pens are really great, just discovered those, they're really handy. I basically work from a messy blur forwards and try and sharpen and sharpen and refine the image as I go. I don't paint every detail, I'm not really a detailed sort of painter, but you know, hopefully it comes out as sort of a quite a unique sort of end product. Influences are pretty wide, Turner, Hopper, Grimshaw especially, the Moonlight paint. I'm a bit obsessed with Moonlight and I never quite get my Moonlight paints where I want them. I get somewhere near but never never the end result that I want. Right through to Street Artist, Banksy, he's a big influence, so yeah, pretty varied. I'm blending a, an urban technique into quite a traditional setting. I think that's why they have a fairly unique sort of look about on my work. I come from an artistic family. I'm third generation, Michael Collin. My dad's twin was a really big influence on me painting and he was very encouraging. Sadly, he's just passed away, which is really sad, but you know, keep, keep, keep the name going, that's the plan. I sell 90% through Facebook, sometimes a few smaller stuff on eBay, but mainly Facebook. 
I just paint the work, list it, and people contact me if they like it. I'm not a huge fan of the art world and galleries. I think it's a bit elitist, and I'm not very elitist. I'm a very working class sort of guy. Um, so yeah, I just like to keep it sensible, keep the work moving, and that's me really. That's kind of what I do. So hope you enjoy looking at them. Uh, big thanks to Ant and Hannah for inviting me on here. It's really lovely of them. It's a great channel. I really like, enjoy watching it. And most of all, thanks to my lunatic daughter, Emily. She's kind of the reason I do all this stuff. So yeah, thanks for looking. Bye now. Thank you.